Okay guys, I'm gonna show you a little cheat method for factoring polynomials when you've been given a multiple choice problem. Now, um, do I think it's important to know how to factor polynomials? Um, I absolutely do, don't get me wrong. It's just that I often don't teach it to my GED students because um, there's many kinds of factoring and uh, eight that we usually learn and it can take a long time, weeks in fact, uh, four to six weeks is usually the amount of time they'll spend in a Algebra 2 or a college Algebra class um, with factoring. And it's not that it's hard, it's just that there's lots of different kinds to learn about. And so because I don't have that kind of time in a GED class, I'm usually trying to teach students like four years worth of math in four months um, I'll often not teach them how to do what's called factoring polynomials, but instead I teach them this little cheat method that they can use that's much simpler when they actually have a multiple choice problem. So let's take a look at this. So I see factor the polynomial 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. That little square there tells me that this is a second degree or quad, we often call it quadratic um, polynomial here. Um, and uh, there are various methods to factor it, and if you've learned them, that is the easier way to go. By all means, use them. Um, but if you don't know them all, then what we're gonna do here is instead of working with the polynomials, we're gonna look at the answers, guess one, and check it. Because take a look at what these answers look like. All these answers are in the same form. Do you see it? They look like one big ugly number, this type of big ugly algebraic expression is called a binomial, a two-termed expression that's multiplying with another binomial. Can you see that? That's one big ugly number times another big ugly number. This is just a case of multiplying binomials. So even though we might not know how to factor, which is kind of like dividing out a polynomial, it's pulling a polynomial out into its products. That's what it means to factor. It's basically the opposite of multiplying. Uh, we might not know how to factor, but we know how to multiply. The multiplying is the easy part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guess one of these answers, and I'm going to work backwards. Instead of trying to factor the answer, I'm going to try to multiply out, or I'm sorry, instead of trying to factor the problem, I'm going to multiply out the answer and see if I get what I expected. So let's give it a try. A lot of you guys use a uh, FOIL to keep track of multiplying. You say first times first when you multiply binomials. Not the way I teach it in my class. I usually just teach that everything in the first parentheses has to multiply by everything in the second parentheses. But I don't care which way you remember it as long as you remember it. So now I'll pass out this term 6x with positive 5 and I'll get positive 30x. And now I'll start passing out the term of negative 1. Negative 1 times x gives me negative 1x. And I'm so lazy like a mathematician that I just write negative x. I often don't write the 1. And then neg negative 1 times positive 5 would be negative 5. Now, uh, this um, expression, this is not an equation, this is an expression. This expression is almost simplified, but I need to combine like terms. And so I get 6x squared plus 29x minus 5. This was similar to that, but take a look. The middle term differs. This is not the correct. Whoa. Sorry. Oh, technological error here. This is not the correct answer. Let's try the next one. I'm going to take a guess at B, so let's try it. Let's multiply out the binomial x minus 5 with the binomial 6x plus 1 and see what happens. Well, remember, multiplication passes out over parentheses, so I'll pass out that x first. 6x times x is just 6x squared. A 6 and 2 x's multiplying x times positive 1 is positive 1x, or as I said before, just positive x. Mathematicians do not generally write a coefficient of 1. Now I'm done passing out the x, it's time to pass out the negative 5. Remember, bring its sign with it, treat it like a negative 5. Negative 5 times 6x would be negative 30x, and negative 5 times positive 1 will be negative 5. And once again, you should combine any like terms you see. That's how we add and subtract in algebra. We combine like terms. So positive x minus 30x will give me minus 29x. 
and minus 5. And you can do that combining in your calculator if you want, by the way, guys. But what students don't know is what number is here. Remember we said if you we drop a coefficient of 1. So if you wanted to simplify that in your calculator, you would type 1 minus 30. And indeed, you would see that I would get negative 29. Okay, great. Does this multiply to what I was expecting? Well, I was expecting a 6x squared and a negative 5, but I sure wasn't expecting a negative 29x. This one's wrong as well. Okay, let's try guessing c and try c. I'm going to multiply out c, so I have 2x minus 1 times the quantity 3x plus 5. Well, 2x times 3x multiplied together the number portions. 2 times 3 is 6. Now multiply together the letters. x times x is 2x of multiplying, or x squared. Remember, we use exponents to talk about repeated multiplication. This is just my head work. You don't have to write this out. Okay, now 2x times positive 5 will give me positive 10 with an x shoved next to it. Negative 1 times 3x, well, all negatives do is change signs, so I'll get negative 3x. And negative 1 times positive 5 will give me negative 5. Okay, once again, if I have any like terms, any terms with the same variable portion, I should combine them. These two have the same variable portion, they're both x's. So I get 6x squared and plus 10x minus 3x. Again, your calculator can handle this, but it can only handle the numbers. So you can do 10 minus 3 in your calculator. And we would quickly see that that's a positive 7x minus 5. And take a look at this, 6x squared, 6x squared, positive 7x, positive 7x, minus 5, minus 5. It sure looks like C is the right answer. Now, if I were you, I'd just stop right there on the test. But I am going to multiply out the last one uh, just to prove to you guys that only the answer will work. So if I were to multiply out these two binomials, 2x times 3x would give me 6 with 2x as multiplying, 6x squared. And 2x times negative 1 would give me negative 2x. And positive 5 times 3x would give me positive 15x. And positive 5 times negative 1 would give me negative 5. See how every term in the first parentheses passes out with every term in the second? Okay, great. Now combine like terms. They're like if they have the same variable portion. These are both x's, so they can combine 6x squared. And again, you could type this into your calculator. You could type negative 2 plus 15, and it would tell you that it's positive 13. Positive 13 what? Well, I was adding and subtracting x's. Minus 5. And we can see again that uh, I was close, but this has that 7x term and I have a 13x term so it couldn't be D. So it is C and that's my little cheat method for factoring. Now I'll do videos sooner or later for factoring. It's an easy subject. It's not that hard. It's just that there's a lot of different kinds and if you're studying for the GED we got a lot to study right? <laughs> Let's be lazy.